Good morning students. Hope you are all doing well. In our last class, we learnt about our sense organs and how they help us. Today, we are going to learn about the different parts of a plant and how they help. We are also going to learn the types of plants around us and how plants prepare their food. Today, we are going to learn about plant parts and their functions. Plants have six parts. How many plant parts are there? Six. Yes, there are six plant parts. The first three help plants get water, make food and grow. They are roots, stems and leaves. The second three help plants grow new plants. They are flowers, fruit and seeds. So let's learn the plant parts one by one. First, the parts that help the plant get water, make food and grow. Okay, so the first plant parts we are going to look today are the roots. Roots have a special job. Roots hold the plant in the soil. The soil is the dirt in the ground. Then roots bring water and nutrients from the soil to the plant. Roots are usually underground but can be above the ground too. Have you ever seen a tree that looks like this where the roots are above the ground? Remember, the roots hold the plant to the soil. Okay, now we are going to look at the second part, which are the stems. The stems hold the plant above the ground. The stem carry water and food through the plant. Stems are the delivery system of the plant. Roots get water and nutrients from the soil and the stems carry the water and nutrients throughout the plant. Remember, the stem holds the plant above ground. The next part of the plant we are going to learn today are leaves. The leaves are on the end of the stems of plant. And this is interesting. Leaves are where plants make most of their food. Leaves take in air and they use air, water and sunlight to make food. Remember, leaves are on the end of the stems. Okay, so the next, the parts that help the plant make new plants. Next part, we are going to look at our flowers. Flowers like leaves grow on the end of stems. Flowers are often the most colorful part of the plant. Now this is awesome. The rich colors of flowers help attract pollinators. That's why they are beautiful. The beauty has a purpose. After getting pollinated, 
flowers can make seeds and fruits. Do you love fruits? Yes, we all. Fruit is awesome. You have flowers to thank for that. Flowers make fruit. Next time you're eating an amazing piece of fruit, just think to yourself. Thank you, flowers. Remember, flowers are the colorful growths on the stems. The next part of the plant we are going to learn about is the fruit. Alright, now where on the plant is the fruit? Fruit hangs on the end of the stems. Now you must be wondering what's the fruit job? What job does the fruit do? The fruit's job is to hold the seeds. The fruit is just the delicious seed holder. Now either one or two happens to the fruit. Fruit is either picked and eaten or falls off the plant and rots. Remember, fruit is the tasty stuff on the stem. Okay, the last part of the plant that we are going to learn today are the seeds. So where are the seeds in the plant? Seeds hide inside of the fruit. Now the seeds have an incredible job, you see. Seeds grow into new plants. Okay, you might be wondering how does that work? Well, here is one way. When animals eat the fruit, they eat the seeds. Later, the seeds leave the animals through it waste wherever the animal is. This is called dispersal. Or fruit falls from the tree and rots. The word rot means die. The fruit dies, the seeds fall out and can make a new plant. The first way called dispersal takes the seed to another place and so it plants a new plant in a new place. When a fruit falls and rots, it plants a new plant nearby near the original place. Remember, seeds live inside of the fruit. I hope you all are doing a good job by paying attention to the parts of a plant. And now I want to see how much you have learned. We are going to play a game, name the plant parts and, we are, and I'm going to show you which plant part it is. Hope you all are ready. Here we go. Look at this picture of a plant, which plant part is colored in? The fruit, yes the fruit of this plant. Here is the next one. What plant part is colored in? Yes, the leaves. The leaves are colorful. It's time for this one. It's colored brown. Which part of the plant is this? Yes, it, it's the roots. Okay, let's try this one. What part of the plant is colored in? You see at the bottom, what is that? What part is that? Yes, the seeds. Let's try this one. Look at the picture. 
could you name the plant part which plant part is that you can see it's outlined in color yes the flowers awesome great job here is the last one which plant part is this yes it's the stem you have learned the parts of the plant so well and it was great having you and i'm sure it was helpful to all of you we have learned the parts and functions of the plant now we will learn about the types of plants around us children we all see beautiful green plants around us did you ever observe that they are of different types and sizes some are very small and some are very big so let us learn about the types of plants today there are many types of plants around us plants are of different shapes and sizes there are mainly five types of plants based on the size and type of stem plants are of different types they are trees shrubs herbs climbers and creepers trees trees have strong woody stems trees are big in size the stems of trees are called as trunk example banyan tree mango tree and neem tree shrubs shrubs are small to medium size woody plants and may grow up to a height of 5 to 6 meters they are smaller than trees they have many thin brown and woody stem example rose plant tulsi plant and hibiscus plant climbers climbers are plants with weak stems they cannot stand straight and need support to grow they must climb on other plants sticks or walls to grow example pea plant grape vine money plant and bean plant creeper creepers are weak plants that mostly grow along the ground they have weak stem and thin branches they usually bear big fruits example pumpkin watermelon muskmelon herbs herbs are very small and weak plants they have thin green and soft stem they usually live for 3 to 4 months herbs can be used as medicines or to add flavor to food example mint coriander spinach rosemary etc children have you ever wondered how plants feed to know this answer we need to understand photosynthesis photosynthesis is a process in which plants make their own food to be able to grow and develop in order to perform photosynthesis they need various elements sunlight carbon dioxide obtained from the air water and chlorophyll which is a green substance all plants have and is the most important for performing photosynthesis chlorophyll is what gives all plants the green color but how does photosynthesis take place look at this plant as you can see its roots are anchored to the ground and through them the plant absorbs water and minerals in the soil water with minerals are transported up the stem reaching the leaves The leaves are full of tiny pores called stomata which absorb the carbon dioxide 
that the air in the surrounding contains. All this containing water, minerals and carbon dioxide is called raw sap. Now it's chlorophyll time. The chlorophyll in the leaves has all the necessary ingredients for photosynthesis to take place and when it receives sunlight the process begins by transforming the raw sap into elaborated sap which also circulates around the plants and works as food. All plants feed from the elaborated sap and they store in their roots like carrots or in a fruit like an apple or pear. Now you know how photosynthesis takes place. But why is it so important? Without plants, there would be no life on earth. We wouldn't have oxygen to breathe or food to feed on. You already know that herbivores eat plants and carnivores eat herbivores. Plants are fundamental for the food chain and they are also fundamental for human beings. When human beings breathe, we turn oxygen into carbon dioxide and during photosynthesis, plants take in carbon dioxide and give out oxygen. Something to know. At night, because plants don't have sunlight for photosynthesis, they breathe like humans do. They take in oxygen and release carbon dioxide. Remember that. The importance of photosynthesis. When plants absorb dirty and contaminated gases, they transform them into pure air. In this way, they clean the atmosphere and all nature. Plants are the best solution to fight against contamination. Plants are called the lungs of the earth. So, we should grow more plants and stop cutting trees to make our world a better place. I'm sure all of you all have learned the different parts of their plant and their function and also the different types of plants which you all see around us and how plants prepare their food. So with this, I come to the end of my class. So stay safe and keep learning.